Hey guys, so in the next few episodes, we're going to be talking about the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. But to help set the stage for some of these New Testament events, it is really helpful to have a basic understanding of the world that Jesus is going to be born into. In this episode, we're going to familiarize ourselves with the geography of the New Testament Palestine area and some of the political history of this region as well. Let's do it. All right, so when Jesus is born, the Holy Land was ultimately under the power of the Roman Empire. But Rome allowed the kingdom of Judea to be ruled directly by a practicing Jew known as Herod the Great. Herod was kind of a mixed bag. He built some great things like the Temple of Herod in Jerusalem and the port city Caesarea, but he wasn't well liked by the Jews, partially because of his affiliation with Rome and his Idumean heritage. They didn't consider him Jewish enough. He's also known for executing his favorite wife, a few of his sons, and in the Bible for order ordering the killing of all male children under the age of two in Bethlehem. To escape the slaughter in Bethlehem, the Gospel of Matthew reports that Joseph and Mary took Jesus and fled to Egypt. Herod the Great died while Jesus was still very young. After Herod's death, the ruling of the kingdom, as per Herod's request, was divided among three of his sons. Herod Archelaus ruled the largest chunk of land, ranging from the Idumea region through Judea and Samaria. Philip, known as Philip the Tetrarch, ruled the northeastern region, which included cities like Bethsaida and Caesarea Philippi. Herod Antipas ruled the regions of Galilee and Perea, which included cities like Nazareth, Capernaum, and Cana. Also as a fun fact, the Sea of Galilee is not really a sea. It's a freshwater lake about the size of Washington, D.C. And then, for the sake of filling in this map, you had the Greek Gentile region called Decapolis. Remember when Jesus sends a bunch of demons into a herd of swine? That happens on the Decapolis side of the Sea of Galilee. The man that was healed departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. Reading the Bible with a map of the Palestine area in hand can be really helpful. If you're a Latter-day Saint, check the back of your Bible for some of these helpful maps. But anyway, back to Herod's successors. Herod the Great's son, Archelaus, was not a popular ruler among the Jews. In the Gospel of Matthew, when Christ's family returns from Egypt, Egypt, we read, but when he, Joseph, heard that Archelaus did rule in Judea in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither. He turned aside into the parts of Galilee, and he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth. Remember, even though the region of Galilee was part of this kingdom, it was ruled by Herod Antipas, not Archelaus. In 6 AD, Archelaus was deposed by Rome and banished. His land was made an official Roman province and came under the rule of a Roman prefect. Fun fact, the Roman prefect in charge towards the end of Christ's life was none other than then Pontius Pilate. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So, Archelaus is banished, but we've still got Herod Antipas and Philip the Tetrarch ruling parts of the kingdom. Now, Herod the Great's family tree can get a little bit confusing sometimes, but bear with me. Philip the Tetrarch had a half-brother, literally a brother from another mother, named Herod Philip. Herod Philip married his half-niece Herodias, and together they had a daughter named Salome. Eventually, Herodias decides she's done with Herod Philip and wants to marry his half-brother, her half-brother-in-law, Herod Antipas, ruler of Galilee and Perea. So they divorce their spouses and get hitched. This marriage causes quite the stir as it violated the law of Moses, and Herod Antipas gets called out by a guy named John the Baptist. John the Baptist is arrested and, according to the historian Josephus, is held in the fortress of Machiris in the Perea region. You know the rest of the story. Salome dances before her stepfather and Herod Antipas promises to give her whatever she wants. At her mother's urging, she requests the head of John the Baptist. Fun fact, Salome later marries her half-uncle, Philip the Tetrarch. Later, when Herod Antipas hears about the miracles of Jesus, he gets a little freaked out that Jesus might be the resurrected John the Baptist. The Pharisees tell Jesus, depart hence for Herod, referring to Herod Antipas, will kill thee. Of course, Jesus doesn't care in the slightest. In the Bible, you'll notice that Jesus does a lot of traveling between Galilee and Judea. According to Google Maps, it takes about 35 hours to walk from Capernaum to Jerusalem. But right smack dab in the middle of these two regions is Samaria. When making these trips, the Jews would often substantially lengthen their journey by crossing and traveling along the other side of the Jordan River just to avoid the Samaritans. They did not get along. Why? 700 years before Christ, this Samaria region, then known as the Northern Kingdom of Israel, was conquered by the Assyrians. Most of the Israelites were taken captive into Assyria, and the region was repopulated with Assyrians, who intermarried with the sparse remaining Israelites. 
This was a violation of the Law of Moses because the Assyrians were Gentiles and Israelites were not supposed to marry Gentiles. The posterity of these unlawful relationships would be known as Samaritans. Essentially, the Jews viewed the Samaritans as mudbloods. <laughs> So there's some background on the world Jesus is born into. We've barely scratched the surface. In our next episode, we're going to flesh out some additional things you're going to want to understand when reading about Jesus. We're going to talk about Pharisees and Sadducees and Sanhedrin and Caiaphas and Zealots and all that good stuff. But if you want to learn more about the stuff we've talked about today, check out the resources in the YouTube description. Watch another video or two on our channel while you're here. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.